welcome everyone. Uh, this is third of our uh, neuroscience grand challenges session. Uh, this session is devoted to computational uh, and data neuroscience. And uh, uh, we are hosting this event in collaboration with uh, uh, Office of the Vice President for uh, Research and the Provost Office. And uh, the house rules and the uh, uh, general rules will be in the chat box and also you'll have a uh, opportunity to enter, enter three different uh, chat rooms uh, focused on three different areas and we'll get to speak of them but let me get started by asking ram ramasubramaniam to give us our charge for today's meeting so ram please go ahead okay, good morning uh, everyone thank you Didi, um for organizing uh, this meeting on behalf of uh, the provost uh, and me, I would like to welcome all of you to this forum on computational and uh, data neuroscience. Um, as the topic uh, suggests, it covers a broad spectrum of approaches in the use of computing to uh, elucidate the functions of the brain, the development of diseases and the response to various stimulations, including pharmacological agents. Um, the approach could range from uh, ab initio models of the brain to deciphering uh, from the pathology of diseases and behavior uh, through a variety of modalities, including imaging, behavioral studies, and uh, simply from large volumes of longitudinal data available on human brain uh, behavioral and clinical observations. So this is a vast uh, topic from what I sit and see from what I know. Given this breadth, some key questions to focus are, um, where does UVA's expertise intersect with this broad scope of uh, computational and data neuroscience? Uh, what do we do well as individuals or as small, small groups now? And how can we coalesce into solving big chunks of this largest puzzle, uh, physiology of the brain, understanding the brain and how it works, lives, degenerates and responds to treatments and repairs itself magically in many surprising ways? Um, <clears throat> What are these chunks uh, we should discuss further and develop a focused and rightly scoped grand challenge questions uh, where UVA can be preeminent? With your work and experiences and uh, sharing them in this forum, uh, we are confident that we can synthesize them in an inclusive uh, panel uh, discussion topic in the fall uh, to further develop these grand challenge questions with the fidelity needed to deploy resources and help you achieve uh, your research goals. I want to thank you again for your time and I look forward to hearing the discussions and uh, the uh, summary at the end. Now back to JD. We have three panel discussions today and the leaders uh, want to introduce each of their panel before we go into the panel. So let's begin with Aidong Jang. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. And I want to thank, uh, uh, you know, to the VPR office and the Brain Institute for giving us uh, this opportunity and also recognize the computational and data uh, importance to the neuroscience. Uh, so uh, among the three topics we, we men, uh, you know, we are organizing, well, uh, people can raise other, you know, topics too. So uh, I'm particularly, uh, Organizing the multi-model integration and analysis. So, uh, so currently, with uh, all the new technologies, uh, and we know uh, brain imaging and also uh, genomic uh, wide array data are available, and also there are op new opportunities to study the influence of genetics to the brain structure. So, uh, and functions. So that comes to how to integrate uh, genetic data, clinical data, and the imaging data, all different modalities into uh, same format and uh, to, to analyze the uh, brain structure. So uh, with that, uh, in the AI machine learning, data science, all these computational uh, uh, approaches, uh, there are uh, advanced approaches are available to deal with how to integrate and analyze different modalities and integrated them into uh, a same format. However, there are some, a lot of issues to deal with missing data, 
uh, multi scale, different scale, how do you deal with all these problems? So I think uh, uh, there are great challenges in this context and also a lot of opportunities also. So I hope we will discuss uh, this in the breakout session. And Jack? Uh, yeah, thank you, Aidong. Uh, yeah, this is super exciting. Um, this whole area is really, to me, the kind of catalyst between a number of different areas in neuroscience that we're uh, already excellent at here at the University of Virginia. Um, I think everybody probably realizes we don't collect less data. We continue to collect more data. And the brain is a very rich um, area for large scale um, data collection, as well as analytics, um, not only here at UVA, but across the country and, across, and around the world with large scale programs like the Human Connect Dome Project, the UK Biobank, um, various efforts uh, in countries around the world. And it would be wonderful to see UVA be participant in those and uh, bring some of our excellent uh, tools and talent uh, to bear on a lot of the challenges that present themselves with computational uh, neuroscience. Um, the uh, theme I'll be um, running today will be the one on the uh, network uh, modeling. And this is like looking at how networks in the brain are, they interact, what are some of the mathematical principles we need to be kind of respectful of, what are some big ideas that we could bring to that particular space when we're looking at brain networks, both in health and in disease uh, in the brain using neuroimaging, EEG, as well as linking those with genomic and other data types. So um, I look forward to having uh, some real nice chats with everybody. Um, and uh, now over to Tom. Hi, thanks. Um, and thanks to Jadeep for organizing this um, uh, discussion. So I'm going to be leading the computational neuroimaging uh, breakout. And um, this is basically any kind of imaging uh, that, that we might do. So this could be human imaging or animal imaging and in vivo or ex vivo. So things like MRI, uh, PET, EEG, but also uh, microscopy. Um, and we're going to discuss what are the, the challenges in, in analyzing that type of data um, and possibly at a large scale, lot, lots of that data. Um, it's very complex. What kind of um, computational resources do we need? What type of expertise do we need to be really strong in this area? Um, and uh, uh, let's see. The, um, the Yeah, so we could, we could talk about um, anything along the line from low-level processing, image reconstruction, uh, um, extracting features from images, um, doing machine learning, uh, predictive uh, analysis uh, to predict uh, disease uh, outcomes from imaging, and um, statistical data analysis for correlative studies, um, uh, correlating behavior or um, disease symptoms uh, with imaging. Um, and so, yeah, so if you, if you do imaging or you're interested in imaging, um, I welcome you to join uh, that session. And I'll just make one more note about all three sessions. You kind of can see that we had trouble um, coming up with disjoint uh, uh, categories, and there's a lot of overlap between the three sessions. So many of you are probably interested in all three topic areas. Um, and I think Amy already said in the chat, feel free to, to, to drift between sessions if you have multiple interests. Um, and yeah, so I'll hand it back to, um, I don't know if we're going to Amy or Jadeep. Yep, yep that's all right. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and open the breakout rooms. There are just a few reminders. So these sessions will be 25 minutes each. Um, at the end of this, we'll come back to the main session and everybody will um, briefly report out and then there's gonna be an opportunity for discussion. I think most people have joined back in and oh, it's, uh, We'll report back. So let's go with Tom first. Tom Fletcher, why don't you go first and then we'll go down. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, so yeah, we had a great discussion about um, neuroimage computing uh, at UVA as part of the grand challenge. Um, and I'll say that the uh, probably the, the first theme that we all sort of agreed on is that we, and I'll use the word that um, James Stone uh, said that we need an ecosystem for data analytics, uh, neuroimaging data analytics at UVA. Um, and so uh, how do we foster collaborations, have people um, that work uh, clinic in clinical research and school medicine 
um, make connections with people over here in engineering and also in the School of Data Science. I should also bring in psychology come, uh, uh, as well um, uh, to, to, to work together because I think we have a lot of core expertise in, in neuroimage analysis already, several faculty that are very strong um, and, and we need to somehow have a more organized um, way of uh, collaborating together. Um, and so a couple of points um, in that theme was um, first to um, reduce barriers to people uh, having access to data. So um, data that comes out of the hospital, um, how do we uh, have infrastructure for transferring the data um, uh, with, with all the you know, personal uh, health uh, information um, uh, protected uh, and, and so that people in engineering and data science, the data analytics people can, can, can work with that data. Um, and then another theme, and this was, uh, again, James' idea, was um, to make advanced data analytics available to everyone who needs it. Um, and so this is the idea of data analytics as a service, uh, neuroimaging as uh, analytics as a service. Um, so we have a lot of you know, faculty doing research and we have, we're advising grad students and postdocs, um, but, but if we wanna really have high throughput um, data analysis um, for everyone that's doing neuroscience research uh, at UDA, we, we probably need um, to, to think of uh, it almost as a service as well as a, a research uh, uh, and, and we need staff possibly to, to, to help um, do that. Um, let's see. Uh, right, and then an, another point, um, and this was Craig Meyer's point, um, is we could use expertise in image acquisition uh, and whether that's MRI or PET or microscopy could be any of these areas. Um, but a person who is um, in the, you know, imaging the physics and the acquisition side of imaging, um, but also connected to the reconstruction and the data analysis, um, because people that do image acquisition these days are really data analytics uh, kind of um, savvy as well. Um, and there's a real need for that um, here at UVA. Um, Let's see, and then uh, the last thing we discussed for a few minutes at the end, um, a, a question, more of a question than a solution uh, was raised by Gustavo Rodi. Um, he asked, um, what are the, uh, the, the, the big brand challenges on the technical side that, that those of us who are here that do data neuroimaging analytics maybe could work together on um, that, that would um, leave, make UVA stand out um, as a leader in, in a certain area, a certain technical area of neuroimaging analysis. I proposed um, at least one area that we have quite a lot of strength in that we might think of as a seed for that type of um, collaborative work, which is um, brain mapping. So, um, and that brings in Jack Van Horn from the other session um, uh, and, and anyone uh, here doing image registration and brain connectivity through diffusion or functional MRI. Um, I think we have a lot of strength in that area. So that was one area we may consider joining forces and trying to really stand out as a leader um, in, in that uh, realm of neuroimage analysis. Um, and I think that's everything we discussed. So I'll turn it over to um, the next group, maybe Jack. Jack, you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, I'm happy to summarize our activities. Uh, this was um, from the network modeling um, group. And um, we discussed kind of a number of different um, things. We talked about major components of um, network modeling um, as it applies to, to the brain. Um, we talked about multi-layer modeling, which involves like leveraging multiple different layers of networks to combine them and link them together to create a more single comprehensive model. Um, this is kind of notion of um, um, multiplexing models, 
um, to uh, kind of pinpoint the dynamics of brain activity um, involving things like operator theory, dynamical systems, and control theory. And another element called network construction, like creating them um, using data from fMRI, EEG, DTI, PET, and other sort of you know, neuroimaging and uh, other electrophysiological um, methodologies as well. I'm sure that that would also include you know, neurogenomics and uh, various other data types, um, you know, not, not necessarily human data per se. We talked about um, theoretical computer science and some of the um, methodologies which have been developed um, uh, in there, looking at causal descriptions of, of networks, including um, like automata and control theory algorithms such as graphical dynamical systems, information sciences, and um, like networks of oscillators and aggregators and how those actually work um, in practice um, and how we may be able to deploy those for trying to understand uh, the brain. We also felt it was very important that the integration of these tools cuts across the different thematic elements of our UVA um, grand challenges. This is how do we further the understanding of clinical problems? How do we promote um, diagnostics, for example, or help to better understand and inform that? And how do we make inferences about brain, form, function, and connectivity um, using network models. We also talked about things outside the brain. Turns out that uh, the, everything um, outside of the central nervous system is also part of the nervous system. So peripheral nervous system is also cool. And um, how you link up the entirety of the entire network across the entire body is also a very interesting challenge. Um, we also discussed how we have um, to make sure that the types of data that we collect can support the methods we develop. One thing which is particularly frustrating is developing a method that basically the data just are not strong enough to support. So things like sampling rate or spatial uh, arrangement of the data needs to be sufficient to help make sure these models are, are appropriate. A couple of other things I would, would add is that we would certainly want computational methods to cut across, as I mentioned, all of our UVA themes in order to make us maximally competitive for current and future NIH and NSF funding initiatives. This includes U-class mechanisms, P-class mechanisms, or center grants, uh, as well as standard R-class mechanisms. Um, the NIH comes up with these, for example, quite frequently, and we would want to be maximally competitive. And um, to uh, touch on the thing that Tom brought up as well, having on-grounds, high-performance computing systems that we can leverage as resources in our um, NIH grants um, will be a very important element to the things that Tom discussed about having an, e and that uh, uh, James brought up as having an ecosystem for data analytics here. Um, the on-grounds computing uh, support needs to be there, in addition to things like cloud-based infrastructure um, for compute and storage. So those were kind of the uh, quick summary of the things we talked about. I guess it's a dong now. Yeah, right. That's all I'm... So um, uh, we, with our group, so I'm so fortunate to know, get to know several uh, excellent uh, experts in this domain. So uh, in integration of multi-model uh, analysis, so there are several issues, uh, you know, raised. Uh, there are some good issues. So first, the team mentioned, you know, when you integrate different uh, data set, uh, different modalities. So you always have this uh, uh, data fairness, uh, explainability uh, issues uh, coming up uh, in those integrated models. And uh, there is a, a, another noticeable issue is uh, people recognize uh, uh, we have different uh, groups. So each group generates a small number of data which are inefficient uh, to apply machine learning. So how do we uh, manager to uh, apply bioinformatics approaches to handle small amount of data. So that is a very good uh, issue uh, challenge also. And uh, among other issues, the most important, I think uh, I should mention Luis back, Kevin, David, and I think also uh, Jake also Luis Henry. Uh, so the issue is uh, uh, they, they have different uh, groups working uh, individually generating uh, data in silo. Uh, so uh, they strongly feel there is a need for the UVA to do some coordination among the uh, individual groups to coordinate and uh, collect uh, significant and useful data. And I believe this align well with the 
uh, an age ago, they, the, they launched this bridge to AI and they called for uh, proposals on data generation, which are uh, AI uh, useful and uh, AI applicable uh, uh, data sets. So, and from the point of collecting data, so you will keep the, uh, in mind, you know, what are the data which we should collect which are going to be AI ready. So their theme is to collect the AI ready data and to be used uh, you know, for the future applications. And I think that's a very good point and align well with the national NH. So I hope you know, the Brain Institute and the VPR office will consider this, you know, how to coordinate different groups because People point out that we have strong expertise and in uh, uh, clinical side, and uh, but uh, how to integrate them all together, become a strong, unique team uh, at UVA, and to go after you know bigger grants in uh, in other, in agencies. So I think that's the main point uh, brought up. So if I missed anything, maybe other people can. Chim in on anything I missed. Now this is open for discussion. Uh, other thoughts? I can say that over oh, oh, this is the third session I'm I'm in now. And uh, I'm hearing many calls for connectivity or uh, bringing together groups from multiple parts of the institution. Uh, Idong just brought it up. I have heard it uh, before. Uh, why is this so important? Is that a general question, Chaideep? Yes. Well, it, it, one thing which is kind of interesting. Well, why like waste, you know, there is a lot of infrastructural funds that go into such kind of coordination, right? that uh, you have to justify those uh, funds from by getting grants and and you know so so how, so how would it yield why is that so important why is bringing people together so important so why having an infrastructure to bring people together important why not just let spontaneous groups arise and they do their thing in order for us to be maximally resp responsive and nimble to these uh, mechanisms which come down from the NIH, like uh, Idong just mentioned this one, the Bridge to AI grant, uh, which we are competing for, um, they had like a two month turnaround, right? They had a, they announced it and the thing's due in two months. If you just have these little pockets of people working together, you can't really bring all the power of UVA to bear on being competitive for those grants. By having something that's um, a, more cross-cutting across the different schools with different expertise, um, we can pull together more quickly and be more responsive to those grants. And that's a U54 mechanism, um, which are among the most lucrative types of grants that you can apply for. Now we're competing for it and it's a grant and there's, you know, the, the odds are not in, in our favor necessarily, but um, we're, we tried to put something together involving multiple different institutions and bringing together teams that not only were here at UVA, but elsewhere, but we would want to be maximally competitive whenever those things come up. And given that the NIH seems to, especially with brain, uh, has often a very major computational component to them, um, it would be really helpful if we all kind of were pulling together and we had a common ecosystem or infrastructure to draw from to be able to be competitive. So Mark and then Jake. Thanks, JD. Um, so I, I'm getting the impression that this is a very human space. And if I, if I may speak with, uh, as someone with maybe humbler aspirations who works on rats and mice, um, I think as Tom maybe mentioned, if there is gonna be a resource that UVA can put together for uh, that, that can deliver some sort of computational product or whatever, I think it would be wonderful to also include um, people with, um, I guess, that have expertise in more granular level models that, that are more specific for uh, animal models. Um, I just wanted to throw that in there because I haven't heard uh, animals yet. 
All right. And then uh, to couple of Mark and Jack just mentioned, um, you know, it was mentioned earlier with uh, the session that we're in where um, the idea that we have our individual silos, right? We're all working towards a, a common goal in order to improve healthcare across the spectrum, but in different ways from basic science to engineering models to neuroimaging, epigenetics, et cetera. And I think that the need for the infrastructure is not only to be ready to respond to a call, but also to uh, be the dreamer of the dreams, right? To introduce new and insightful uh, uh, ideas to the realm of our, each of our exp uh, specific expertise. Um, again, this is the first time where I'm meeting a lot of you. I've had some interactions with a few folks in the call, like Jack, and of course, uh, Matt Panzer and uh, James Stone and Majoy, but at the same time, um, most of you do incredible things, and then I'm learning about it today. Um, and I think breaking out those silos, establishing infrastructure to rise to prominence and preeminence, I think really um, would allow us to break apart and synergize our efforts, as has been said earlier, to um, move the needle forward in our respective science. I see Harry's hands up. Yeah, so uh, just a word of caution, and that is this sort of Many of us have been at a stage where someone says, build it and they will come. And, uh, you know, creating infrastructure, creating resources, creating cores is often viewed as being the, the, the catalyst that brings together and gels people. And I have seen this fail again and again and again. What you actually need to do is you got to solve a problem for which you don't maybe have the technology of core and build it together so that you actually have, let's say in this case, the computational uh, 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 resources support solving a specific problem that gets a specific set of people initially in a room and working together, rather than putting it out there for everybody to join in. And that could be, as Mark said, that could be around modeling of neural circuits that could be tested in, in animal models, or it could be in the human space. It could be mining autism data, bringing that community together with an IDDRC community, whatever it may be. But I, I, I'm just, just, I just want to be cautious that we're not just thinking about let's create this big computational infrastructure with expertise and a couple of core leaders and whatnot and hope that everybody will flock to it and will take advantage of it because I've seen this fail many, many times different places. Uh, Harry, it, it, can I reframe it as it has to be a grounds up approach rather than top down? If I, yes, I, I, absolutely. So people have to want to bring this together and have a vision and say, this is the grant I will en end up applying for. It may not be three months from now, but it may be two years from now, but those things have to be there. But other thoughts, other ideas? I'm looking for any hands up, otherwise you can unmute yourself and speak. All hey, right. so I'll I'll um I'll just chime in on what Harry said. I think he's right, actually. I think it definitely should be from the ground up because if you try to do it from the top down, you're never going to be able to figure out. Like even if you were building infrastructure to build some kind of global API to do machine learning, you're you're never going to get it right from the top down. So it probably does have to be project focused. Uh, I think what I was trying to say in our breakout is that it would be good if the product of that were somehow available so that everybody wasn't trying to independently reinvent that infrastructure. And maybe it's as simple as, and maybe this already exists, but maybe it's as simple as UVA has like a UVA GitHub thing where everybody can pull from and everybody knows where it is and that's your infrastructure. But I think that like for me as a sort of clinically focused medical physicist with not a lot of coding time, it would be nice to be able to draw from something that I knew was likely to work without spending the first two months of my time trying to like rebuild that infrastructure to do basic data collection and processing that everybody else is already doing. That's all. Yeah, I'll just chime in. I think that's absolutely true, but the key is how do I know what's on your GitHub or what to pick? And so there needs to be that talk. 
And that's the only way that these will ever be successful. So even though everything's built up from the ground, there needs to be a big overall vision on how everything works that is holistic um, in, in nature. And really what we've seen, and I've been in three of these now too, um, as an end user for a few and, and as a primary researcher in another, but it, it really seems that what's being proposed is a lot of tools that go across different themes. And it's, it's about weaving these things together, not just saying, hey, we're gonna invest in this one column uh, because as we know, and, and we had three breakout sessions that, you know, uh, the leader said, these are all very overlapping and they're, they're all going to pull skills and expertise that are going to help in, in almost every thematic area that we have talked about in the last couple of weeks. So I, I think it's, it's that overarching thing. And how do you get people who move across working with people who move up and down? Um, and all those people need to be in the room at the same time. It's, it can't be a, a core where you, you're waiting for someone right. to come to you and say, hey, I have this problem. How do you solve it? You, we need to be talking about the problem at the onset. Um, and so it's that integration of multidisciplines that's really going to make this investment successful. All right. Yeah. We're here. Yeah, all right. Just Thank you, Matt. Uh, let me just, uh, we are almost out of time. So I wanted to invite Megan Barnett from a provost office. Megan has done strategic planning, is doing strategic planning for the provost, and she's done it before for uh, another institution and has been involved in planning for neuroscience. So, Megan? Good. Thank you. Um, so, on behalf of the provost office and the BPR's office, you know, thank you for participating in this. And, um, and some of you now, for the third time, um, I'm trying to actually recognize people, which is great. Um, and as Jadeep said, you know, in the other sessions, uh, a lot of the projects that we've heard about and proposals and suggestions, they have all needed to draw on exactly the kinds of tools and methods and integration that you were talking about here today. Um, so I think this is gonna be a key part of whatever we end up doing. Um, I have to say, I really like the way that Jake put it when he said, you know, this, is, this will enable us to be sort of the dreamers of the dream. Um, and that's exactly what the, this grand challenges process and the investment is supposed to, to do. Um, it's supposed to help people dream big and then we are gonna try to invest and make it happen. So thank you all for participating. Thank you everyone. And uh, don't forget to post your ideas on IdeaNote. Uh, thank you.